it probably sounds pretty strange for a Conservative Party politician, a former deputy chairman of the party from the northeast of England, suddenly becomes uh, you're obsessed about the Olympic truce. But for me, the journey has been a very long one. It was a journey uh, which began uh, back in 2005 when I commenced a PhD at Durham University uh, looking at ethics and foreign policy. And I came across this instrument of the Olympic truce as the United Nations uh, resolution. And I thought, this is amazing. What a great, uh, what wonderful sentiment, what wonderful ambition uh, to have in such a resolution. And then I started uh, doing a curiosity-driven research, trying to identify a, the countries who'd signed it, and I found out that all 192 members had signed it. And then I uh, thought I would find out, well, what great initiatives had happened? Uh, and I couldn't find any. <laughs> so everybody had signed it, nobody had done anything about it. And I thought, well, this is really interesting. And uh, then later on, about uh, when I came to, to this place, I mentioned it uh, first to uh, Lord Coe and uh, mentioned it to Seb. And I said, what about this idea? And he was very receptive to it. We talked within Low Cog as to whether something could be done at that level. Uh, and I think some additional things were added into the programme as a result of that, particularly in the Cultural Olympiad and in the schools uh, outreach. But really what we concluded was, um, you know, LOCOG are the organising committee for the Games. Uh, they're not the signatories to the truce. The signatories to the truce are the governments of the world. And chiefly, the proposer of the Olympic truce for London 2012, which is the United Kingdom government. Uh, they're the ones who need to take this seriously. They're the ones who need to come up with the initiatives uh, rather uh, than that. So then, after the general election, when, of course, the party which I'm uh, part of became uh, you're part of the coalition government, I saw a great opportunity to uh, really advance this because I felt it chimed very much with where David Cameron and William Hague were coming from in calling for a new direction in foreign policy. Uh, they were calling for uh, an emphasis on prevention rather than intervention. Uh, they said that their top national security priority was tackling uh, the root causes of conflict rather than actually tackling conflict uh, itself. And I thought these, this was fitting in, chiming. The Olympic truce fits perfectly with that message. And so I began raising it in the chamber. I began meeting with ministers. Uh, and uh, raising it with colleagues and that has been uh, you know, some would say that's all I've done <laughs> over the past year is really uh, fight that fight in every way I can uh, using the parliamentary channels available to me. Now, I have to say that when I sit down now and I, I look at saying well where am I and I you know, understand that although there was a huge amount of goodwill towards this uh, you know, really beginning to crystallise around January, February. I think that that slipped back a bit as other major international conflicts have come onto the uh, scene, such as Libya and the response to Japan, the economic crisis. I understand all of that. And I suppose at that point you need to say, well, do you keep on trying to raise the issue here in Parliament? Or do you say, well, listen, rather than asking the government to do something, can I do something? about this? Can I be the change that I want to see uh, in others? And my response to that was the idea of the walk.